What's up you guys, it's Jaded, and today we're taking a first look at Hydraulic Simulator 2012. Just kidding, I wish. This is actually... Rush. How badass is that? So anyone who knows me knows that I really adore the Tron universe and the aesthetic of Tron, and this game is clearly inspired by it, and it's clear even the music as well. So what is this game all about? I'm gonna start in story mode here because some of the mechanics are explained through the early stages of that and you really begin to understand what this game entails. Essentially you put on a track where you have to get from point A to point B as fast as you can. Now that last part doesn't necessarily matter, um, you know it's just there if you want to compete with yourself or compete with other people online in the form of ghosts. So the main mechanic in this game is the overheat bar in the bottom right. So the first way you monitor this is through use of nitro boosting on the ground. And as you hold down your nitro boost, it's going to overheat your car, so you have to watch it. And if you pass through a checkpoint, it immediately refreshes it back to zero so you can start using nitro again. And then the second way in the game is through flight. That's right, you can fly in this game. And th the coolest part about it is there are no restrictions other than the limitation you have with the overheat bar. So you can fly wherever you want in this world. Uh, you don't have to stay to the track. There's no invisible walls necessarily that are uh, immediate. So you can kind of venture out into other buildings and, and wall ride other buildings. And there's just a lot of freedom. The game doesn't restrict you in that way. Now, you will run out of flight mode by overheating and it just cuts your wings off and you plummet. So if you're looking to finish the track, obviously you want to stay on course. But uh, I just thought that was pretty cool. So as you progress through the story mode, it's very simple like how it ramps up in difficulty. Uh, you start to see all the mechanics in the race itself, in the environment that they use. Your car also has a jump that helps you get over things like little ledges and such. And using the jump enables you to fly because you can't fly from the ground, you have to be in the air. And, uh, you know, as you get through the story mode, they start showing you different hazards that you'll run into and uh, also different ways to navigate the environment through flipping over and wall riding and uh, even ceiling riding in some cases where you're plastered to a wall. And the difficulty can really ramp up in the story mode, not so much, but through other modes. And it quickly becomes one big mind F the first time you get to some of the uh, flipping over and over and over and you're, you're just like, where am I in this world? Like, am I right side up? <laughs> am I, you know, on a wall? Uh, because the camera follows you. Once you get to the more challenging levels, uh, there are like the challenge mode where there's a bunch of tracks in there for you to check out. That's, that's where you really, if you want to see how far the rabbit hole goes, you know, check those out and uh, try to compete with the people online because they get pretty intense. And if you're doing those, I highly recommend using a controller with this game because uh, even though I use the keyboard throughout the whole thing, it just it's apparent that a controller would just be a lot better. Um, not to say that the keyboard doesn't work or isn't functional, like it totally is fine. Now I want to talk about the stunt mode a little bit. This is where I realized what this game is truly trying to bring back, and that is San Francisco Rush. And more specifically, Rush 2. Now these games were for the N64. If you guys played them, you probably loved them, like me. They were non-realistic, they were just, you know, crazy physics and, uh, you know, go wherever you want. And with the stunt mode, if you guys remember, it was this big open area and there were ramps and things to go off of. They were like this magenta colored gradient and you would just try to get the highest score possible in that area. Now with the stunt mode in this game, it feels a little different. Uh, maybe times have just passed and, and I'm not interested in something like that anymore, but it, it seems very basic in uh, how you obtain points. Uh, maybe if I had a friend to compete with, it would be much more interesting. And not to say the mode's bad, but it just didn't interest me personally. I can see people getting a lot of fun out of it though if uh, they're trying to go for high scores and things, because some of the environments in the stunt mode are actually pretty cool looking. Now for the vehicles, you can get other vehicles and the first one I unlocked was this A-Team slash mystery machine van uh, and if you go into flight mode or turbo boost, this giant turbine jet opens up in the back and uh, that's really awesome. And then the other vehicle I unlocked was the wannabe Back to the Future DeLorean and when you're in flight mode, this one the wheels actually collapse up just like in Back to the Future. 
So, you know, some really cool stuff in there, and as far as I could tell, they do handle a little differently, or use turbo a little differently. So this game is completely free, you can go download it right now, I believe it's about 300 megabytes on their website. Uh, just google Nitronic Rush, or look in the description. And you could even pick up the soundtrack there, which is really awesome because the soundtrack's really well made, and I really enjoyed it, so if you just want a free soundtrack, uh, something to listen to, you can do that too. You know, for a team of people that are going to university, I mean, they built this game from ground up. They didn't use any engines, all the physics and everything was coded by them. And so it's really impressive to see that from a group of, you know, essentially students. And to see it so well made and put together. I mean, even the website isn't like ghetto or anything. So, really awesome game for what it is. And I think you guys should check it out if any of this interests you. I mean, the only downside in the game is that there's no co op and the online ghosts can take a little while to download. Like, every time you restart, it downloads the new ghosts uh, to race against. So, that could be a little annoying, but. Uh, you know, I'm sure they'll update it so that it's smoother or something. I mean, this game has an update button built right into the game itself, so who knows what they're going to add to it later in the future. But uh, that's going to do it for me. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next first look.